what is the end goal and why am I doing this? And, and more important to me every day is, and am I enjoying the journey? Aside from that, I had a long talk with somebody yesterday that we look so focused on the achievement that you know, the achievements out here, I hope I do it. Um, I'm committed to it and, and it's great. I do want that, but I want to enjoy today. I may never make it to that achievement. I may die tomorrow. You know, I want to, I want to get there. So, you know, I, again, I, I like, I want to be driven. I enjoy waking up with that, but can I be okay with today? Can I be content with today? And I play with that. You know, we can play with the words. I tend to look at it as that. Can I have gratitude right now and be content with all I have, be content with all I don't have and be content today and find gratitude right here, right now. Yes. Yes, I can. And I, I mean, I want to be, I want to do that. That is a goal of mine for this day, this moment. Stay connected to gratitude. Hit the follow button right now and join thousands of listeners tuning in each week. We're the gratitude seekers. Come join us. Hi, Gratitude Seeker. Welcome to a new episode of the Gratitude Podcast. Today with us, we have an author, former pro, pro athlete and personal drive expert. His name is Kevin Miller, and we, he's here with us on the Gratitude Podcast. Welcome, Kevin. Hey, thank you for having me, George, and I'm uh, honored to be with you today. My pleasure. So I wanted to keep this brief. Uh, so that you can say a bit more things about uh, the work that you're doing. We're going to be talking about the book itself uh, in a bit, but uh, I just wanted our audience to get to know you uh, through your own words. Ah, well, thank you. This is, uh, there's nothing I enjoy more than talking about these issues that matter just of our own personal growth, which the point of that is it's our personal enjoyment. It is having gratitude. At the end of the day, I want to wake up driven and I want to wake up with gratitude and then just find myself, you know, you know, I live out here in the national forest where they actually have therapy for forest bathing, you know, to come out and immerse yourself in forest bathing. And I think about that as I go through the day that there's probably nothing that gives me more peace than gratitude bathing mm. just your message just being present and and stepping back especially when i get frustrated about something and being grateful i mean at the end of the day that that's that's the goal all these efforts for personal growth and personal development self-improvement and self-help i mean they're all a means to an end you know it's not like we get up today i mean i can't wait to go read about self-help it's not you know it's what it does for us and at the end of the day, man, I, that's why I appreciate elderly people that a lot of them have found, hopefully, you know, have found, they finally come to a place of going, oh my gosh, so much doesn't matter that much. I'm just going to sit here and I'm just grateful to be alive, you know, and I, I appreciate that. So uh, that's a big quest of, of mine is to help people. I mean, it's the end goal that we're looking for and end goal of being joyful, of being, and not every moment has to be happy, but having joy and having a, a level of peace and even in all my drive sometimes i've missed that so but i mean i love inspired people people who are, are seeking and pursuing i do it's inspiring to me and i want people to be that and uh really grateful to wake up that way every day wow amazing amazing this is such a wonderful introduction to to who you are beyond achievements beyond things that um we usually think about when when we are asked who, who am I and wh what I'm doing. It's uh, who am I and uh, how I'm feeling. What are the things that really matter to me that uh, I really feel grateful for and that uh, really have an impact. And uh, yeah, I think I think this is wonderful. So you you mentioned one of the things that uh, I wanted to us to talk about in many of my discussions i've heard people say that if you are grateful uh, or if you're too grateful you're not going to be motivated you're not going to have any kind of drive 
do you do you think this is true or this is a just a myth i think it's a great question it's a great thing to focus on as one of my concerns as i talk about drive and being driven is that some people it can just sound exhausting like oh my gosh can i just be okay can i just be I'm, I'm tired of striving i'm tired of trying and I'm, i do get that I, I get that as an entrepreneur you know sometimes I'll, I'll have decision fatigue like man i'm tired of deciding stuff can i just can i just not and of course i feel that way for a minute until somebody else starts to decide something for me and then i realize no i do want but uh but i do understand that exhaustion and i've done that you know i've driven just with my hair on fire and and it can be exhausting especially when, or it can be exhausting when we don't really know what we're going towards what is the end goal and why am i doing this and and more important to me every day is and am i enjoying the journey aside from that i had a long talk with somebody yesterday that we look so focused on the achievement that you know the achievements out here i hope i do it um, I'm committed to it and, and it's great. I do want that, but I want to enjoy today. I may never make it to that achievement. I may die tomorrow. You know, I want to, I want to get there. So, you know, I, again, I, I like, I want to be driven. I enjoy waking up with that, but can I be okay with today? Can I be content with today? And I play with that. You know, we can play with the words. I tend to look at it as that. Can I have gratitude right now and be content with all I have, be content with all I don't have and be content today and find gratitude right here, right now. Yes. Yes, I can. And I, I mean, I want to be, I want to do that. That is a goal of mine for this day, this moment. And I'm not going to say, I'm not going to say, but I'm going to say, and, and I don't really want to just quit. I, I don't, am I satisfied? I mean, again, we can play with the words content, satisfied, but I, I tend to look at am I content today? Can I be content here? But I'm not necessarily satisfied. I feel like I want to be a good steward of my life. And, and and again, back to being driven. I want to wake up tomorrow. If I wake up tomorrow and go, you know what? I'm good with everything I have. I should be grateful. I shouldn't want anything more. I'm so pr privileged already. I'm done. Well, now what do I do? I, how boring is that? I mean, I, I like the idea of retirement. I just don't understand. I, I do understand it, especially when you're doing, you're spending your days not in gratitude, not enjoying what you're doing, not inspired, then I would want to retire too. But I would hope that people would find work and a life and days, consecutive days that they enjoy that they wouldn't want to end necessarily. I mean, at some point, I, I you know, I may work a little less and play a little more, but I, I want to enjoy this day. But I, I feel um, a responsibility to continue on helping people and, and being involved in life in the world. And selfishly, though, I also just want to. I want to wake up in the morning curious about something, excited about something, uh, interested in something. It was t Tony Robbins who a long time ago said, he, he said, you know, I think just the happiest people are just those who are making positive progress every day. They're just got something to look forward to and something to go after. And I've learned not to judge that. And so if it's, man, I'm looking forward to a trip, great. I'm looking forward to building something at my house, great. I'm looking forward to being on a show, great i'm looking forward to selling more books you know doing something that's going to increase my business man that's great whatever it is uh i mean i'm looking forward to i'm looking forward to cooking dinner with one of my kids tonight you know i'm looking i want to look forward to something and so it's a great question can we be have gratitude in what we have now and in a sense say man i'm good right now i'm content if if nothing got better am i good that'd be a great place to be and why not make some things better? Why not have something to look forward to and to look at what do I want and why? Uh, I've even seen some, I've, even, I've seen lots of people, actually lots of, lots of guys that I know, lots of businessmen who have made enough money. They do not need to work anymore. All of them that I know, at least that I'm involved with though, are just looking for continually more meaningful work. They just enjoy it or they just want to help people. They want to do something. They don't want to go just sit on a bench for the rest of their life. So great question. I love unpacking that. Thank you. I don't know that anybody's ever asked that. Yeah, thank you. So uh, I think it's very interesting because we we think that, okay, or many people think that, okay, once you're grateful, you just, like you said, you just want to sit on the bench and be grateful and that's it. But the the truth is that we are more complex as human beings right like uh, 
what you just mentioned, what some of the takeaways um, for me were the fact that we want to evolve, we want to grow. And even though we are grateful, we are we are happy with where we are right now, yeah. this need for growth is, is inherent it, as well as the the need to um to have a purpose to to want to create something for the world to to give something to other people to to have some kind of meaning in in society and um i think that regardless of uh, how grateful we are we can still continue to to grow and to to give to others and to have meaning and I think it's actually the the way to go. Uh, like we're not supposed to just think about the the great things that we want to do in the future, but also the the great things that are happening in in the present, and that actually drives us. Right here at the Gratitude Podcast, we believe in enjoying the journey, not just the destination. We love traveling, seeing new places, and meeting new people. But getting a bad seat can make getting there something really hard to be grateful for. Feeling crammed in and uncomfortable is neither healthy nor fun. What if there's now a car out there that makes traveling and creating memories together enjoyable without the dreaded bad seat? Lexus's new TX is a three-row SUV that considers every single passenger, no matter where they sit. With comfortable leather captain's chairs and a spacious third row, everyone gets to have an enjoyable journey to cherish together. Big or small, all passengers are getting enough leg room, elbow room, cargo room. There are even cup holders and USB chargers for all. Finally, a three-row SUV where everybody wins. The first ever Lexus DX. Experience amazing at your Lexus dealer. The holiday season can be hectic, and that's where HelloFresh's 15-minute meals come in. These quick fixes help you get a wholesome meal on the table in less time than it takes to get delivery. The most wonderful time of the year is also the most delicious, don't you agree? Enjoy every bite of the holiday season with HelloFresh. Choose from over 45 weekly recipes and over 100 curated picks from HelloFresh Market. I love the fact that HelloFresh makes the meal decision process so easy and healthy. I don't know about you, but with delivery I'm tempted to make unhealthy choices. So having a great fast option at hand makes the world of a difference. Go to hellofresh.com slash gratitude free and use code gratitude free for free breakfast for life. One breakfast item per box while subscription is active. That's free breakfast for life at hellofresh.com slash gratitude free with code gratitude free. Enjoy America's number one meal kit. Yes. Yes, that's a good point. And I'll admit I struggle with that, Georgian. I I struggle sometimes with being present because I get I get excited about the future. I'm looking towards the future. That does motivate me and it does drive me and I can miss the moment now and find out that even in excitement that I'm kind of in anxiety, I'm not paying attention, I'm not being grateful. So yeah, that's a that's a risk in this. I mean, this is all, you know, it's not this is why part of the book is uh part of the one of the two big myths I talk about is drive alone is not the holy grail. Drive alone doesn't make you happy. You can be driven and drive yourself to hell and to heartache and and whatnot. Um, you know, it's interesting. I was thinking as you were talking too, I had a guy on the show a while back, Don Dapani uh, is his name, real, real famous guy. And he was a monk for 10 years. For 10 years, he had a lot of solitude, had a lot of study, focused on being present and focused on being grateful. And being and having gratitude and after 10 years he left and you would think okay i guess he's good he's going to sit on a mountaintop for the rest of his life and be grateful right back to what we're talking about and he he did in his heart we all want you said the word purpose we all want purpose and we find our greatest purpose in helping other people serving other people not that that's out all altruistic it's selfish it gives us joy it's it's it can be very selfish in that uh, in a good way i think and that's what he does and today he's got his his ashram, his his property, like thirty acres or something in uh, in Costa Rica, 
and he's building that and writing books and will have people there. And he wants to impart and help other people find gratitude. And he wants to do that. He's not just sitting there. Yeah. In gratitude, doing nothing. He wants to impart it, help other people experience that. It's a, a beautiful depiction of that, I think. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, we, I think it's one of the things that um, gives us the drive, right? To um, to give to other people, to to have this kind of meaning and to wake up knowing that the the actions that we do actually impact other people, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, we, it's so elementary to say it, Georgian, you know that, but it's just true. I mean, at the end of the day, that's where we find purpose is in having some kind of meaning to somebody else. And we can do that very, very selfishly and very uh, insecurely. And that's not, that's not good as well. But even on the other side of getting to a place of, if you can, yeah, being present, Dude, personal peace, personal confidence. That's still what we want to do. We want to go out and have some, have, have, give meaning to other people's lives and getting testimony that we mattered uh, to somebody is, is dramatic. It's, I mean, it's, it's dramatic. I don't know that there's anything more fulfilling. And I thought one time, you know, if I woke up and the world was just like it is, but I was the only one here, I, I, I have no purpose. What's the point? You'd only eat so much food and drive cars around fast and watch some movies. And then I just, there's nothing to live for. It's, it's other people, it's relationships. And what can we impart to them? And that's where I see the most joyful, gratitude, you know, grateful people is those who have found a way to give to others in a meaningful way. And again, I, I, I just, it's important to me because uh, I think it matters that that's not all it's just selfless and al selfish and altruistic. It is what, it is what fills us. I do what I do today. My work, why did I choose this work? What's what I'm interested in, but it's also what I get the most joy in giving other people and seeing a response. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it hopefully fills us both up. Exactly. Exactly. So if I am to ask you, what, what are you most grateful for right now? I'm, I'm guessing it's related to, to the work that you're doing, right? Man, that's that's a good question. I'm I'm most grateful right now for the insight I'm getting into my own life. Uh, I and I you know, I should say that yeah, I'm just my I'm most grateful that I matter and help other people. I mean, right now I I'm I'm in a pl I mean I'm always in a place. That's why I do the shows. It, my podcast is called Self Helpful. Uh, actually, we're just about to change it. By the time this comes out, it's we're changing it to What Drives You. Uh, it's more in line with what I'm doing. So obviously that's the book title, but. Uh, in doing that though, I get to sit with people and learn and I get excited about bettering myself, helping myself because then I can be better for everybody. I'm a better dad when I help myself and I'm not sitting in weakness or fear or any of those negative emotions when I can figure out ways to help myself, to reprogram my brain, to get myself thinking in a different light, to be present. I'm a happier guy. My kids like me better. My wife likes me better. My friends like me better. And I, and my audience likes me better. I mean, they testify that they, that's a good thing about podcasting. As you know, it's when you listen to somebody long enough, you can't hide. They feel you, they feel your spirit. And if I'm coming here in my own fear and doubt and insecurity, it's going to come across. And uh, so it's exciting. You know, I get excited to hear a message, to talk with somebody about something that I, that I need, that I want. And that excitement, I think, you know, comes through. So it starts with, again, that's why this, you know, the, the show has been called me. It's still around self-help, self-improvement that to the level that we continue to help and improve ourselves, develop ourselves, we can then pass that on to other people. And it's just a beautiful fruition yeah definitely um it's one of the best gifts that we can give the world to uh to take care of ourselves from all points of view because we end up being uh the kind of person that we want to see in the world you know that we want to interact with of course if we are always tired and um hungry and all kinds of things yeah it's uh it's really not that good of a, an experience to to be around us so 
it's our responsibility to, to to take care of that first and then we can go out in the world and have a, a positive impact of course it's not going always going to be uh, easy to do that um, sometimes we fall back on on some things sure. but uh, that doesn't mean that that we are not giving our best to 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 improve and to, to get better and to understand how we work and why we, we work in in different ways and uh, yeah I, I totally resonate with that so um, what I also wanted to to get into uh, that is something that we both really uh, enjoy and appreciate is nature so uh, in the many interviews and episodes of the the gratitude podcast one of the main uh, ideas that we that we talked about uh, having a as having a really deep impact on our gratitude is nature and i'm i'm curious what's your experience with nature and mental health and um yeah just the connection between you as, as a human and nature we're all grateful for having a roof over our heads and love the comfort it brings us so we spend a lot of time indoors actually did you know that americans spend an average of 90 percent of their time indoors and take about 20,000 breaths a day unfortunately the quality of the air inside is two to five times more polluted than outdoor air according to EPA. With that in mind, I love having my windows open as much as possible to let fresh air in. But with the noise and air pollution, it's not always possible to do so. Thankfully, Air Doctor offers us an alternative that's quiet and efficient. It's the air purifier that caught the attention of CNN, ABC, Money and many more. Air Doctor filters out 99.99% of dangerous contaminants and allergens such as pollen, pet dander, dust mite, mold and even bacteria and viruses. So our lungs don't have to. Even more so, Air Doctor comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. So if you don't love it, just send it back for a refund minus shipping. Head to airdoctorpro.com and use promo code GRATITUDE and depending on the model you'll receive up to 39% off or up to $300 off. Exclusive to podcast customers you will also receive a free 3-year warranty on any unit which is an additional $84 value. Lock this special offer by going to airdoctorpro.com that's a i r d o c t o r p r o dot com and use promo code gratitude. It's dramatic for me, Georgian. I mean, uh, nature in my life, and I hear the testimony so often. Um, I do know there's obviously a lot of people who live in big cities who don't have a whole lot of access, but. My gosh, I can be in a middle of a city and just find a beautiful tree and hear the wind blowing through it mm. and and be touched very much in the same way as I can out in my office. And when I do that, the times that I'm in a in a city to for speaking or or whatnot, I'll go for a run uh, almost always. And I always find something beautiful, a tree, uh, a lawn, uh, you know, some an area of flowers, just something that gives me that. And I think that we're made to find joy in that, that it's an energy that just lifts us up. And yeah, like I said, there, you know, there's a, I've heard more and more about forest bathing these days, taking trips and going out to the forest. Now, I live in a, in a forest. I, I mean, I grew up and I wasn't real aware. I was in a neighborhood and a, a rel, you know, not, not a big town, kind of a medium sized town. And spent a lot of time outdoors. It's before the internet and all that good stuff. And so we were, I wasn't thinking about it so much. Uh, and the landscape there was, was nothing, nothing special. And I was, I think 17 and went to the mountains and just, it just touched my heart and I knew it did. 
And from that point on, it's been a part. Now I built a house in a national forest out in the Colorado Rockies because I wanted to immerse. I also often say it's like uh, it's like vitamins for our soul. And, uh, but again, man, I can, you know, I'm looking at your backdrop with plants and I've got plants behind me too. And I can turn around and see it's a, I think it's called like a Norfolk pine or something like that. And it's just beautiful and it's wow. great live. And I, uh, I have a, in my, my home office, I've got an orchid that just bloomed. It's starting to, it's got a couple blooms coming out. It just, ah, uh, it speaks to me. So if it's just something sitting on my desk, you know, we can participate in that. I love watching movies that take place. Most movies, as you know, it's in a city somewhere, but you can find them where it takes place in the outdoors and beautiful landscapes and, Gosh, yeah, I I so appreciate that and think that we can all participate in some way, even if it's a plant on your desk, and then it does have meaning for us. I'm I'm I, I also just from a, you know, us being energetic beings, uh, the idea of grounding has gotten more popularity, and I do, and I, even living out here, I can realize, man, my feet, my fingers haven't touched the ground in a while, and I'll go outside barefoot or I'll go sit down and stick my fingers in the dirt and just think of kind of like, you know, letting everything run through. Uh, and I'm not super, uh, I'm not super woo woo on, you know, how all that works and stuff, but I just think hey, it just makes sense, you know, to be in touch with this earth and not just the, the wood and concrete that we come out on. So that even to go and just sit on the ground when you can and touch, touch the earth, I think is uh beautiful and yeah, has deeper meaning than we'll probably ever understand. Wow. I love so many things about what you what you just said. Uh, so let me just take take them one by one. So um, I really love this idea um, for for our listeners if they are in a big city and it's harder to get out in nature one way or another, or they have a really busy schedule. That there are solutions like you mentioned the fact that you have some plants in your house, the fact that you have um some trees that you can can see and you can you can connect to uh that can connect you with with nature or any kinds any kind of um relation even as something as small um as just one tree can connect us to nature and i think that's that's wonderful because in in many days maybe weeks for some it's really hard for them to 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 do this and to to connect with nature so the fact that we can do this in a really easy way is is very powerful it's um something that i hope uh, our listeners will be thinking about ways in which they can do uh, do this in in their environment and um just this fact that we can do this constantly can help us a lot and what you just mentioned about uh being in contact with with uh with the earth with the the ground itself uh it's so powerful it's so interesting that indeed we uh we live in somehow a very comfortable but somehow artificial uh kind of environment it's great from many points of view but we just forgot our relationship with with the earth itself and i didn't even think about this but it's it's really powerful like just uh touching the earth just uh whether with our feet or with our hands that can have such a such a great impact and i was thinking about when we're planting something or uh if we have a garden when we are we're taking um vegetables from from the garden how impactful it is and it's something so simple but when you do it and you're aware of the action itself it's it just makes so much sense and it connects you to something that that that's so deep that um we know it's inside of us but we we just forgot about and um yeah, and the, the the first thing that you mentioned and the last thing that I wanted to, to get into is this idea of forest bathing. I absolutely love it. Because when when we when when we think about hygiene, we we think about showering, taking a bath, things of this nature. But 
when we think about our mental health, it's a great way of taking a, a, a mental bath or a mental shower, just being in, um, in nature and connecting with nature. And uh, indeed, it's just part of us being healthy. And uh, I, I just love it. I just love it. <laughs> Yeah, likewise. Yeah, it's that's a great way of, of stating it. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. And uh, I, I love the fact that these ideas um, begin to have names, you know, like concepts and uh, things that people do as, as something that is new, but uh, it's also something that I hope in time will become the norm, you know, like I'm, I'm going for a bath. Where? <laughs> You know, like you're meeting people on the street and they, they, they're saying, okay, how are you, Joe? I'm good. I'm going to take a bath. Really? But your house is in the other direction. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to the forest. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's We do so much where we go out for entertainment. I'm going to go out to a movie. I'm going to go out to an event. I'm going to go see a friend or family. We travel and to those who are not close to a forest to go, gosh, I'm going to drive whatever it takes 15 minutes or an hour and spend an hour just in the woods, with my hands or my feet, you know, touching, I'm listening to the wind in the quiet and just, yeah, it's, it's, uh, I wish we realized the value of that. You, know, you think about the animals, every they, they spend their lives touching the earth and we insulate ourselves. We have shoes and floors and, and to think we can go for, I think people, you know, you go for a year easy with never, touching that and i think there's something spiritual to it and but even from a scientific standpoint you know they talk about that just uh, like static electricity i mean you've got stuff going on in you and to go out and 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 let that you know uncharge out of us i think about that and i'll, I'll sometimes realize oh my gosh yeah it's been you know a few days I, i'm great i'm lucky that i have a a special type of floor at my home a concrete floor that's real close to the ground and so i spend my time at home barefoot uh, just to be, you know, opportunity. but I know people these days, you know, even in apartment buildings, uh, who can do different, you know, go outside obviously, but there's some that are now are doing even things running copper pipes and stuff. So you can ground yourself wherever you're at. Uh, so yeah, a lot of, if you look at grounding, you can find a lot of stuff uh, about that, but, uh, I don't think any of it touches or, or is as much as, as much as going out and just touching the bare earth. Here at the Gratitude Podcast, we believe in enjoying the journey, not just the destination. We love traveling, seeing new places and meeting new people, but getting a bad seat can make getting there something really hard to be grateful for. Feeling crammed in and uncomfortable is neither healthy nor fun. What if there's now a car out there that makes traveling and creating memories together enjoyable without the dreaded bad seat? Lexus's new TX is a three-row SUV that considers every single passenger, no matter where they sit. With comfortable leather captain's chairs and a spacious third row, everyone gets to have an enjoyable journey to cherish together. Big or small, all passengers are getting enough leg room, elbow room, cargo room. There are even cup holders and USB chargers for all. Finally, a three-row SUV where everybody wins. The first ever Lexus DX. Experience amazing at your Lexus dealer. The holiday season can be hectic, and that's where HelloFresh's 15-minute meals come in. These quick fixes help you get a wholesome meal on the table in less time than it takes to get delivery. The most wonderful time of the year is also the most delicious, don't you agree? Enjoy every bite of the holiday season with HelloFresh. Choose from over 45 weekly recipes and over 100 curated picks from HelloFresh Market. I love the fact that HelloFresh makes the meal decision process so easy and healthy. I don't know about you, but with delivery I'm tempted to make unhealthy choices. So having a great fast option at hand makes the world of a difference. Go to hellofresh.com slash gratitude free and use code gratitude free for free breakfast for life. One breakfast item per box while subscription is active. That's free breakfast for life at hellofresh.com slash gratitude free with code gratitude free. 
enjoy America's number one meal kit. Yeah, that's that's so fascinating for me that it's so simple, you know, like it's and when you do it, it just makes so much sense. And um the the, the fact that it's so simple, it's uh, so interesting because we we tend to think that many of the 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 problems that we have have complicated solutions but in many situations just going outside um, getting in touch with nature maybe even uh, going barefoot in nature connecting to the earth can help us uh, connect to parts of us to resources that we already have that are natural and that help us find the the solutions that that we need and uh, i think when when we when we think about our ancestors i think they they knew that and they they did the these kinds of things and we don't see it but it's relatively recent that we got to to be in um, apartments that have nothing to do with with the earth right yeah. Yeah, it is. I mean, we, we don't realize that the norm has not been a norm for that long. Uh, yeah, it's been only recent where we've lived in high rises and where we've had electricity and the internet and running water and all that kind of stuff that we know nothing about. And my, my kids, you know, it's hard for them to realize that when I was a kid their age, there was no internet or no internet. I mean, it's just, we don't, we don't realize. And yeah, we're in such a short span of time of the industrial age and the information age and all that. And, uh, and a lot of it's great. I mean, I'm grateful for it. I'm grateful that we can do this and talk across the world. Uh, it's awesome. And, and it can pull us away from some of the things that will lend towards our greatest health. So I want to budget it just like that to budget some forest bathing to, to look at, man, I appreciate the technology. I need some time away from it. I appreciate what it does for me. What's it keeping me? What's it keeping me away from i even talk about that with my kids with because you know, i can get frustrated with screens oh my gosh you know get off the get off your screen and i have to remind myself okay guys sorry sorry it's not the screens are bad i love screens too i got two screens in front of me right now and, and i'm grateful for them um but if that's all i do what am i not doing what is it cutting mm -hmm. it so we tend to look at that so you know screens aren't bad but if that's all we do what am i not doing well i'm not going outside i'm not having a conversation i'm not exercise and i'm not meditating i'm not uh doing some art you know i'm using my using different aspects of my of my brain i'm just on a screen and even looking at you know am i on the screen for entertainment which i like doing that but i, I you know I, I need to be on my screen for producing productivity as well I mean, yeah looking at everything and budgeting and i like to step back i think it does us all well to go okay i know this is the norm i know everybody's doing it is this best is this helping me? What am I missing out on? And again, man, I find the most grateful people, the most peaceful people are those who are aware and they manage their lives so that they're not missing out on things, that they're not overusing, you know, certain things. And uh, they have a healthy respect for, for everything that they're doing and are present. You know, they're, they're thinking about what they're thinking about. I love that thought. And they're 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 thinking about what they're doing and how they're being, uh, which is probably one of my more uh, my high one of my higher focal points these days is is to get away from what I'm doing and just to focus on how I am being, which takes the the inner work, and that's why we do shows like this and have these conversations. Exactly, exactly, exactly. I love I love your perspective on on screens and um on how we how we manage this because yeah i tend to at times i'm just like okay i just don't want to see any screens anymore and i tend to uh to go to the to, to the to the opposite of uh appreciation for for them because um like you said i feel like uh because i'm so addicted at at some level to this I'm missing out on on other things, and um, but I think that the right right approach is uh, the one that you just mentioned. I am grateful for them, and I'm grateful for all that they can do. But I should also be aware of uh, what 
uh, I'm not doing while I'm resting or and getting some entertain and entertainment from them. And I was also asking myself and, uh, at one point, okay, but what was I doing before all of these screens appear? You know, like what were how was I resting? How how would um, relaxing look like without the screens? And I love this idea that that you mentioned. You know, like asking questions. Okay, um, what is this taking away from me? Because it's something. Okay, uh, it's not something that it that we're fighting. And I think this is the the powerful part. We're not fighting the fact that we are using these screens and they are helpful. And there is some a lot of great entertainment on the screens, but we should also be aware of what's um, what it takes us away from, and that's that's very powerful. And uh, we can think of alternatives. We can think of things that actually matter for us in a different way. And we just we, we don't just hate the screens, and we just I don't want to want to see them anymore. But we think, okay, yeah, we have we have an alternative. We have something else that we can do with that time, and is. Yeah, I love I love this idea, and I think it's uh, it's something that's so relevant nowadays because obviously we spend a lot of time using technology in different ways, um, but we still need to get back to to those natural things, to the natural balance, if we want to spend more time in in gratitude and in in a in a great place. Yeah, I like that term natural balance. I mean, the you know, in my in my book, What Drives You, I take us through these key areas of life, you know, relationships and spirituality and health and wellness. And just looking at statistically, these are what these are where we find fulfillment. You can say gratitude. This is where we find our, our greatest gratitude in these areas of life. And let's audit them. Let's go through and find out what do we care about? What do we value and why? Uh, that's that's the point of being authentically driven is to know what you want and to know why and to look at those and have them listed out and go, okay, what do I value spiritually in my health and wellness in relationships? How do I, what do I value with money, my work and, and, and to go, go on through these categories, those give you kind of the areas as you talked about to, to balance, to look at, okay, today, if I want, if I want to be driven authentically and driven well in these areas and achieve these things and enjoy these paths that I've got to invest in those. I've got to balance those. I got to budget those, but those are the areas that today, if I want, if I want, if I have a spiritual component in me, which I do, and I have a faith, I'm, I want to engage in that. How do I do that? Is it with a screen? Is it with a book? Is it with meditating? Is it with prayer? Is it with whatever, but it gives me a, it gives me something to do. Uh, and with health and wellness, you know, what am I going to do? And if you need to use a screen for health and wellness, cause you're watching somebody's fitness routine, great, but you're here doing something, you know, you're, you're doing something on your own and living your life, uh, outside of the screen. But, but I, I just, I like looking at those areas as focal points because, uh, you know, sometimes even like with kids, you can say, I get off the screen, like, Oh, what else do I do? Well, it's good. I think as adults, we sometimes think about that. We get so inundated with, we've got, you know, our computer, we've got our phone and we do our work on it and we do our communication on it. We do our entertainment on it. We don't really know what to do. And again, it's not to vilify the screen, but then to say, gosh, it's just, it shouldn't be all, you know, on the screen. What are the things you care about? What do you want to engage with and taking some time to do that. And, and regardless, again, with screens being so predominant in our lives, I mean, I do, I always, I must always have, you know, a device with me because if nothing else, I'm playing Spotify music on it, you know, it's my music player. And so I may have it there, but I also want to have times where, yeah, I do not engage with it. Why at night I read a physical book, I'm in bed with paper in front of me. And now, you know, some people use a even a Kindle. Okay. That's, you know, I'll give you that. That's okay. It's, it's, it's still a different perspective of reading words and not being entertained with images uh, and, and whatnot. But yeah, having some times when I'm going to fast in essence from the screens, just for the sake of getting my uh, vision on, on something else. Sometimes I think about that even with, 
even with like forest bathing, I need my eyes to be able to adjust from not what's just in front of me, but I want to spend some time, uh, you know, after uh, sometime in, in a, an hour or two, I'll go have lunch on the deck here at my office at my studio and we'll look off to Pike's peak. That's however many miles away. And I want to give my eyes a chance to, to focus in a bigger way. And it's a great metaphor. I want to let my mind think of things that are further away than just what's in front of me. Uh, so again, it's not, it's, it's not about good, bad, right, wrong. It's just about, uh, as you said, I think a good word is, is balance with it. Here at the Gratitude Podcast, we believe in enjoying the journey, not just the destination. We love traveling, seeing new places, and meeting new people. But getting a bad seat can make getting there something really hard to be grateful for. Feeling crammed in and uncomfortable is neither healthy nor fun. What if there's now a car out there that makes traveling and creating memories together enjoyable without the dreaded bad seat? Lexus's new TX is a three-row SUV that considers every single passenger, no matter where they sit. With comfortable leather captain's chairs and a spacious third row, everyone gets to have an enjoyable journey to cherish together. Big or small, all passengers are getting enough leg room, elbow room, cargo room. There are even cup holders and USB chargers for all. Finally, a three-row SUV where everybody wins. The first ever Lexus DX. Experience amazing at your Lexus dealer. The holiday season can be hectic, and that's where HelloFresh's 15-minute meals come in. These quick fixes help you get a wholesome meal on the table in less time than it takes to get delivery. The most wonderful time of the year is also the most delicious, don't you agree? Enjoy every bite of the holiday season with HelloFresh. Choose from over 45 weekly recipes and over 100 curated picks from HelloFresh Market. I love the fact that HelloFresh makes the meal decision process so easy and healthy. I don't know about you, but with delivery I'm tempted to make unhealthy choices. So having a great fast option at hand makes the world of a difference. Go to hellofresh.com slash gratitude free and use code gratitude free for free breakfast for life. One breakfast item per box while subscription is active. That's free breakfast for life at hellofresh.com slash gratitude free with code gratitude free. Enjoy America's number one meal kit. Wow, I love it. And it's... I love it so much because it's it's, it's exactly what uh, what I'm experiencing as well. Like, and I'm sure that many of our listeners are um, having this kind of experience also. Um, when we look at screens, they are naturally, for instance, for the phone, it needs to be quite close for us to to be able to see what's on it. With the laptops, again, they they need to be quite close. Um, and in general, we have the screens quite close to us. Yeah. And when we do this all the time, of course, the, our eyes get tired. Um, but a great exercise. And also, we tend to, uh, like you said, as a metaphor, we, we tend to uh, be short-sighted. We tend to see just what's right in front, front of us, just the, the first few steps. We don't have a bigger vision. And that psychologically makes us uh just think about the 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 near future we don't see the the bigger picture and when we go out and we and i love to do this as well and uh that's why i love what you what you just mentioned i love looking as far away as possible and um to it's also really restful for the eyes to to look far away and also to, to have this kind of wide perspective in which you can um, you can see the the bigger picture and more of the world actually, because our eyes, if we if we think about our ancestors as well, they are not used to having uh, so much uh, so many things that we look at that are so close. Well, we always uh, looked further away 
one way or another yeah. and that's that's natural and I, I think that being uh in tune with nature and with what's natural for us is what what's best for us and what makes us get back into a place where we can deal with challenges much better and uh, be more grateful so um another point that uh, that you started with and that i wanted to to get to is um the why we tend to forget to ask ourselves about the why we do a lot of things and we we just don't remember why we're doing them and that's why i love the name of your book what drives you because it makes you uh think about that question what actually drives me what why am i doing all of the things that i'm doing because we tend to forget and we tend to go just in patterns and we just go on a roller coaster and we we tend to just go with it and we don't remember why we got on it uh, in the first place so uh, let us know a little bit more about this idea i think it's huge it's one of the biggest foundational aspects of our life and of our drive and of our gratitude is knowing the why behind what we want or i would say what we think we want which we don't want to hear we want to think that we know what we want but and we're so inundated with our culture today especially through these screens with the media and the expectations of our of our culture i mean we all grew up with some kind of an upbringing and probably some expectations that people had on us or expectations that we just saw and thought man that looks good or that looks right and we just expected it of ourselves so we just brought it on ourselves it wasn't even from somebody else but it's an expectation that came that we agreed with and we didn't really question is that what i authentically really want and Man, that drive that drives a lot of people's lives for their entire life, never providing fulfillment, never providing uh, aspects of gratitude because it's not authentic to them. And we know those stories of somebody and who you know their parents wanted them to do something, to study something in school, and to get a job here, and they did that, and it was not fulfilling. It's a big deal, but we do that in so many ways in our lives. So again, my my book focuses on taking you through these key areas of life saying okay here's what tends to provide the most fulfillment to people in these areas statistically but there's a range there's then you know you don't have to do any of those but generally it's going to be within these areas but uh what do you want and so you say okay this i want this i want to make this much money or i want to work at this i want to achieve this um i want these kind of relationships and they say well, well why you know I, I want to have i want to have a uh, hundred friends you know why well, because it seems like the more friends you have, the better it may be. Okay, that doesn't mean that it actually matters to you. I'm not somebody who needs 100 friends. I'd rather have five really close friends or three, you know, even. But to look and go, uh, why? And that why is usually whatever your first answer is, is not the real why. You got to get below. Why? Why? And it'll come down to an emotion. It'll literally come down to an emotion, something that gives me peace. When we do all this stuff to at the end, again, it's all a means to an end to get to a place where we just feel good. It's kind of, it's almost, it's almost disappointing to hear that, that all this effort, all the stuff we're doing, all the achievements and the status and the things we go after and what we do at the end of the day, it's just to make us feel good. That's it. And, and to look at that and go, okay, why am I doing that? And, and it's so often I'll find, even in my own life, it's a constantly having to come back to that. And gosh, I get to doing and doing and doing and doing more. And I feel like well, that's, that's so much of that, you know, it's good stuff, but it's not great. I'm going to have to give up a lot of that to come back because I, because I, I'm always getting more clear on, on my why on what what the end goal is of this thing so as you go through these big areas of life with money and work and relationships and finances and health and wellness and spirituality and you go through those there's a why at the end of that it's not that we want to just go pursue health and well just exercise just because for it's for fun i mean some people i mean i have exercise that i enjoy but uh, uh but there's there's foods i eat 
that if I just ate what I liked, it would not be the healthiest stuff. You know, now so I eat things because there's a why at the end of it. Because I want to, I want to feel and look good. Well, why? Well, that's a good question. Why do you? I, th that's a big one I go through in the book is health and wellness from a couple different places of how you want to look and how you want to feel. It matters to us how we look. It just does. You know, you might say it doesn't matter to you. I don't believe you. It does. And it matters to other people. And there's, you know, there's opportunity costs in there. And then how you feel. I've never met anybody who said, I just don't care how I feel. So you're fine with absolute pain. I mean, nobody would say yes to that. You know, why? Why do you want to, to, to feel good? What do you, you know, and there's a value because I want to be at peace and I want to be able and I want to be able to bend down and play with my kids and not have pain. Uh, I want to be able to go on a hike because I love the outdoors and if my knees are achy, I can't do that. And the outdoors fills my soul. Really? So you want to be healthy and well because of a, almost a spiritual component of this is so you can get out and really start connecting that. That's what makes drive up. It's not inspiration and motivation and having to pump yourself up so much. It's knowing, okay, this is what I want. And I've figured out why, and I'm in agreement with that. And that's a big word to me is, is agreement. Cause there's sometimes we'll realize, you know, guys, why are you at, why are you going after that that job, or let's say, why are you going after that degree or going after that promotion or going after that title? And he say, you know, why? Well, just cause I, cause I want it. Okay. Really? Why? Okay. Cause I want to prove to my dad who said I'd never amount to anything that I can really. So are you good with that? As be, that's being, that being your motive, is that going to be with, are you going to, is that going to give you real joy at the end of it? Are you going to get a trophy, you know, from your dad, if you finally achieve that and you'll find people, you know, start digging in they'll go, Oh, yeah, that's not a real enduring why. Let's find it. Let's let's connect it to something you care about. And because you may find out, and here's the what we're looking for: you don't care for yourself. You don't want to be a doctor. You're doing that to impress somebody, but you actually don't really want to do that at all. You 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 want to be an accountant. Um, let's get down to what that is, and find out really why you do. And I say that you know it, it's it's hard work. It really is. Um, I find that people feel a lot of freedom and permission when they read my book because it frees them up to step back and ask the why. But sometimes it's a little frustrating because they don't know. And then they, then you know, there's your work. That's okay. You're in good company. And you may find out, I, I don't know. I think I want to do that, but I don't know. Okay. Then that's, that's, let's, let's figure out the work and start doing that internal work to figure out uh, what, what lights you up, what does drive you, what does inspire you. And be free to own it for yourself and not just as to other people or, or the culture. And I say that and have so much compassion because I know it's so hard. I'm not free from it. I've got an ego. I want to belong. There's nothing more we want as humans than to belong with people, me included. And sometimes I got to look at that and go, gosh, am I doing this just to belong? And it's not really me. Or, or is it a part of me? And I got to grapple with that sometimes. And, and there may be sometimes in a given moment where I may do something that's just to belong. Not something huge, not something in you know completely inauthentic or immoral or whatever. But I may do that. But I like being aware of it. Okay, you know what? I'm going to go along with that just because I do want to belong with you guys in this thing. I'm going to I'll go ahead and do it. Not my favorite thing. That's okay too. But I want to know. I don't want to be blind to it. Otherwise, you can go and go really deep and end up devoting yourself to things that are fitting somebody else's why and not yours, or fitting an unhealthy why for you. So yeah, you asked that question, man. That's a that's a that's a big root issue for me. I think for everybody. Definitely, definitely. And like, like I said, um, knowing this this root is so powerful because in many situations we we do things that um, uh, make us suffer, uh, that are really hard for us. For why is that? If we if we are more aware and we look into them into them deeper we realize that they might not even be our wise and um it's it's very powerful when when we do that kind of work so uh, where can our audience get your book yeah the book is called what drives you and you can get it at amazon in any format that you want i just was on a show yesterday with somebody who listened to the whole book and it's me talking for who knows how or five hours probably, uh, but it was a lot of fun to do, uh, but you can get it there. And then you can find me at kevinmiller.co anywhere. That's the website. You can find me on all the social media, uh, YouTube and uh, whatever. 
Uh, and then of course the the podcast is uh, the podcast, but when this comes out, it'll just have changed the name to what drives you, but we've got a big audience. And of course on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you listen, you can find it. And uh, we do four shows a week and just have great conversations like this with great people like you, Georgia. Excellent. Thank you so much for, for being here with us, for staying longer than we uh, um, anticipated. Um, but uh, I'm sure that you've enjoyed the conversation as much as I did. So thank you so much. Thank you. It's been an honor and great to connect with you. Hey, Gratitude Seeker. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to this interview. I really appreciate it. And if you could think of one person that would also benefit from it, share it with them. It might actually be the inspiration that they need to make their day or maybe even their life much better. Thank you so much once again. This has been Georgian Benta. Don't forget to keep seeking and spreading gratitude.